Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shreya Savitre. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 30th of September. Indian Prime Minister Modi lays foundation stone of four medical colleges, says government working towards transforming health sector. Pakistan calls US Senate bill seeking assessment into its role in Taliban victory as unwarranted. An India-Nepal hold bilateral meet to review progress in post-earthquake reconstruction projects. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday said that the central government is working towards transforming the health sector of the country and is increasing its strength, self-reliance in the sector. As he virtually laid the foundation stone of four new medical colleges and inaugurated the Institute of Petrochemicals Technology located in Rajasthan state. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday virtually laid the foundation stone of four new medical colleges in Rajasthan state and also inaugurated the Institute of Petrochemicals Technology located in Sitapura. Speaking at the event, Prime Minister Modi said that the central government is working towards transforming the health sector of the country and is increasing its strength, self-reliance in the sector. This और बहुत कुछ सिखा रही है हर देश अपने अपने तरीके से इस संकट से निपटने में जुटा है भारत ने इस आत्मदा में आत्मनिर्भरता का अपने सामर्थ्य में बढ़ोतरी का संकल्प लिया है पेट्रोकेमिकल टेक्नोलॉजी का उद्घाटन Prime Minister Modi also informed that the central government wants to ensure that every district in the country has at least one medical college or an institution that provides postgraduate medical education. Meanwhile, India witnessed a sharp single-day spike in the daily coronavirus case load on Thursday. At 23,529, India saw a 24% increase in fresh infections. At present, India has 277,020 active cases, the lowest level of active cases in the last 195 days. The total number of virus-related cases registered so far stands at 33.7 million. The recovery rate battered at 97.85%. India's health ministry says that this is the highest since March 2020. The total number of inoculations done since the vaccination drives launch earlier this year stands at 883.4 million. Voting for the assembly by polls was held in India's eastern Odisha and West Bengal states on Thursday amid tight security and stringent COVID-19 measures. The polls had to be deferred in April in Pipli, Odisha and two constituencies of West Bengal following the death of the candidates there. Meanwhile, the high-voltage by-election to Kolkata's Bhavanipur seat is being seen as a prestigious battle for Mamta Banerjee, the chief of regional Trinamool Congress party, who has to win to retain her post as West Bengal's chief minister. She is presently not a member of the Legislative Assembly, as she had earlier lost in Assembly elections to a candidate of India's ruling Bharatiya Chanta party. The sitting lawmaker from Bhavanipur had resigned so that Benerji could contest from the seat and retain her birth. The results of the by polls will be declared on 3rd of October. Moving on, with pictures, landscapes and cultural diversity, Gilgit Baltistan is the ultimate tourist destination. However, locals have lamented the Pakistan government has completely failed to develop proper infrastructure and bring policies to boost the tourism sector in the illegally occupied region. The remote Himalayan region of Gilgit Baldistan is blessed with breathtaking beauty as it features stunning valleys and crystal blue lakes. Locals have, however, claimed that the tourism industry in Gezer Valley has been facing a severe crisis amid the COVID-19 pandemic. They lamented government's apathy to develop road and other basic infrastructure in the illegally occupied region, which has kept it out of bounds for tourists. Khan <laughs> 
अभी तक कुछ नहीं हुआ यहाँ पे काम एज अगर प्रैक्टिकल हमने रिक्वेस्ट भी की थी उनके हुकूमत से भी इमरान खान साहब के हुकूमत से भी और यही जो मेन बदल का इशू तो अभी तक कोई हल नहीं हुआ वहाँ Meanwhile a lot of local residents who have taken up fishery farms for survival in the region said that the trout fishing which attracted a lot of visitors has also been hit hard amid the pandemic Sir me is what local tourists are there was covid ki wajah se wo hamare jo is ilake mein tourists nahi aate the is saal aur nahi aaye to iski market to abhi bahut hai trout ki market bahut hai hum अगर यहाँ प्रोडक्ट हो तो ये एक्सपोर्ट भी हो सकती है तो इसकी वैल्यू बहुत है लेकिन कोविड की वजह से हम कुछ नहीं कर पा रहे इस साल लोकल्स ब्लेम इस्लामाबाद इनडिफरेंट एटीट्यूड टू वर्ड्स रीजन सोसाइटी अपार्ट फ्रॉम फिशिंग इंडस्ट्री शॉप कीपर्स होटेलियर्स एंड अदर स्मॉल बिजनेस इन द रीजन आर ऑल्सो फेसिंग एन एक्यूट क्राइसिस Pakistan's foreign ministry has termed a draft bill introduced in the US Senate as unwarranted as it seeks assessment into Islamabad's alleged role in Afghanistan before and after the fall of Kabul and in the Taliban offensive in Panjshir Valley. Pakistan's interior minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmed also rejected allegations that Pakistan had provided any military support to the Afghan Taliban. Pakistan's foreign office on Wednesday termed a draft bill introduced in the US Senate this week as unwarranted as it seeks sanctions against the Taliban and assessment into Pakistan's alleged role in Afghanistan before and after the fall of Kabul and in the Taliban offensive in Panjshir Valley Pakistan's foreign office spokesperson Asim Iftikhar Ahmed in a statement said Sustained security cooperation between Pakistan and the US would remain critical in dealing with any future terrorist threat in the region. Such proposed legislative measures are therefore uncalled for and counterproductive. Separately, Pakistan's Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmed also rejected the allegations that Pakistan had provided any military support to the Afghan Taliban. Aur jis tarah American Senate mein bill gaya, Pakistan ke aur bade imtihan ho sakte hain, lekin hum surrender nahi karenge. हम अपने अफगानी भाइयों के लिए अगर कोई इंसानी बुरान पैदा होने का वक्त आया तो अफगानिस्तान की भरपूर मदद करेंगे हम उनकी कोई अस्करी मदद नहीं कर रहे कोई कुछ मदद नहीं कर रहे ये सब बकवास है मीन वाइल टॉप पेंटेगन ऑफिशियल अल कायदा और द इस्लामिक स्टेट कुड री बिल्ड एन अफगानिस्तान दैट इज येट टू बी सीन वी कुड गेट टू दैट पॉइंट जनरल कैनद मैकेजी देड ऑफ द यू एस मिलिट्री सेंट्रल कमांड सेड in response to a question at the Senate Armed Services Committee hearing on Wednesday this comes as Taliban earlier this month denied the presence of Al Qaeda and Islamic State militants in Afghanistan despite attacks by the Islamic State following the Taliban's takeover in August In news from Afghanistan Afghanistan's health system is on the brink of collapse the World Health Organization has warned while on the streets of capital Kabul the hunger families are suffering is as acute in urban areas as the drought stricken rural part of the country under the Taliban Kabul residents now hope for improvements in healthcare and medicine availability Amid economic problems and rising poverty in Afghanistan, now the healthcare system that is very dependent on foreign aid is on the brink of collapse. Afghans say most healthcare facilities across the country are now running out of emergency medication and there is a lack of medicine in medical facilities. Several COVID-19 hospitals have also closed. Residents in capital Kabul on Wednesday said they hope for improvements in healthcare and medicine availability under the Taliban. Another Kabul resident said he hoped doctors would decrease their consultation fees amid unemployment in the country. Since the Afghanistan failed, the poor people are poor. 
در بدر از دکترا فیش پایان بیاره بر مشکلات مردم رسیدگی شود لاست ویک The World Health Organization's representative to Afghanistan called on the international community to resume funding of the war-torn country's health program, which was suspended when the Taliban took over governing the country, as the healthcare system had plunged into crisis. Since takeover, the Taliban have grappled with a severe economic crisis and have faced pressure on issues ranging from girls' education to allegations of reprisals against former officials, and others associated with the previous government. Moving on, India and Nepal held a secretary-level meeting in Nepal's capital Kathmandu on Thursday to review progress of post-2015 earthquake reconstruction projects in Himalayan nation. As part of bilateral cooperation, six schools reconstructed with Indian grant assistance were jointly inaugurated and foundation stone of a health post was laid on Wednesday. India and Nepal on Thursday held a joint project monitoring committee meeting at the Foreign Ministry Secretary level in Nepal's capital Kathmandu to review progress of post-2015 earthquake reconstruction projects in the Himalayan nation. This came after the Indian Embassy in Nepal and Nepal's National Reconstruction Authority had earlier this month signed agreements for the reconstruction of 14 cultural heritage projects and 103 health sector projects across the country which were damaged during the 2015 earthquake. Top officials from both the countries had jointly inaugurated six schools and laid foundation stone of a health post being built with Indian grant assistance on Wednesday. This is the first prominent show of bilateral cooperation since Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Dioba took charge in Nepal in July this year. <laughs> दीर्घकालिक आवश्यकताओं को प्राथमिकता दी जाए इसके लिए हम लोग ने सरकार के साथ यहाँ की सरकार के साथ बातचीत की और ये सहमति बनी कि आवास, शिक्षा, स्वास्थ्य और सांस्कृतिक धरोहर के संरक्षण के लिए हमारा ध्यान केंद्रित होना चाहिए। India has committed a reconstruction of grant in aid of 250 million US dollars for reconstruction projects in housing, education, health and cultural heritage sectors in the Himalayan nation, which were damaged during the deadly 2015 earthquake. Dal Lake in India's northern Srinagar city is integral to tourism and recreation with houseboats, being a major tourist attraction for decades in the beautiful Kashmir Valley. To restore the beauty of Dal Lake and bring in more tourists, authorities have resumed cleaning of the lake in full swing. Cleaning of the iconic Dal Lake is in full swing in Srinagar city of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory as authorities try to restore the beauty of the lake and bring in more tourists. Jammu and Kashmir Lakes and Waterways Development Authority brought machines to speed up the cleaning process as manual cleaning was also done on Wednesday to clean lily, weed and garbage from the lake. This year, we have increased the mechanical component. This year, we have deployed about 15-16 machines in this year, especially for the lily extraction. I will tell you more about this, because this is a live lake, there are macrophytes and aquatic plants. उनके लिए जो साइंटिफिक एडवाइजरी है वो ये है कि 30 से 40 परसेंट ही हमें वो उसको निकालना पड़ता है और इसमें और भी फैक्टर्स इन्वॉल्व होते हैं क्योंकि ये हैबिटेट इसके लिए भी है वाटरफॉल के लिए भी है फिश के लिए भी है डल लेक इस इंटीग्रल टू टूरिज्म एंड रिक्रिएशन इन द रीजन एंड गुम सफाई की है और हम घूमने के लिए आए हैं हम भी अच्छा मन कर रहा है देखने के लिए और बहुत खुश है गवर्नमेंट के ऊपर हम के इसने अच्छा काम किया है। Dal Lake also acts as an important source for commercial operations in fishing and water plant harvesting. Over the years, the Dal Lake has deteriorated considerably as thousands of tons of sewage spew into it, feeding weeds and choking the lake and its aquatic life of oxygen. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.